all right so this is a uh, pre e27 which is just a refresher of domain because we're gonna have to deal a lot with domain when we get into our um, regular 2.7 assignment in math 119 okay domain represents all the values of x that we can plug into a function okay and we represent domain with interval notation okay interval notation lists a span of values um, from smallest to largest using either parentheses or brackets. Parentheses mean we include our endpoints or our starting and endpoints, okay? Um, and our parentheses means we do not include them, sorry. We do not include them, and brackets means we do include them. So if I wanted to do something like express all numbers less than two, I'm gonna draw a graph um, just to uh, show you. If I put two on my graph and I'm talking about all numbers less than two, that's everything to the left of two, okay? But it specifically says less than, which means we're not including two. So I'm gonna put an open circle at two. So interval notation, the furthest to the left I could go is negative infinity. And the furthest to the right I can go is this two, but since it's not included, I use a parenthesis, okay? Same thing um, on this next one. If I want all numbers greater than zero, again, I can draw a little graph to help me out. I put zero on here. If we want greater than zero, from zero, I'm gonna shade to the right. Again, I'm not including zero because it just says strictly greater than. So my interval notation on this one would be zero with a parenthesis because that's the furthest to the left I can go, not including zero, um, and neg sorry, positive infinity to the right also with a parenthesis, okay? This next one says all numbers greater than or equal to three, but less than 10. So if I wanted to draw this one on a graph, I would need a three and I would need a 10. Now it says greater than or equal to three, which means I'm going to include that three. And then it says, but less than 10. So on my 10, I'm not gonna include it. Now, if it's bigger than three and less than 10, we're talking about all the numbers that are in between three and 10. Okay. So my interval notation here, the furthest to the left, would be 3 included with a bracket, up to 10 not included, oops, not infinity, um, up to 10 not included, so we use a parenthesis. Okay? So what we're going to be doing is looking, taking a function and looking for everywhere that x is defined. So really all we're looking for is the problems, because if we have a problem, we can say, oh, x can be anything except this problem value. Okay. So the first one we want to look for is um, the domain. We're going to write an interval notation. Anytime you see interval notation, you should be thinking, okay, I'm starting with negative infinity to infinity, and I'm going to assume it's going to be that unless I find a problem. So notice this first one, I have a rational function. Rational means I have a fraction. Anytime we have a fraction, we have to make sure that the denominator is not zero. Okay our denominator cannot equal zero. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and just set 7x minus 14 equal to zero and solve it to see what makes it zero, okay? Or in other words, I'm just gonna go ahead and say not equal to zero. We don't want this to equal zero, so let's figure out what we don't want x to be. So I would move my 14 over by adding, which gives me 7x cannot be 14 which if I divide off my seven means that X cannot equal two. So if I wanted to draw my picture like before, again, I'm not gonna grade you on if you draw pictures or not, it's just to help you out. I would put two on my graph and we're saying it cannot equal two. So I'm gonna draw a circle where two is, but it could be anything else. So it could be all on the left side of two, all to the right side of two. So my interval notation to represent my domain of this function would be negative infinity up to two then I'm going to use a parenthesis because we're taking two out, but then it could be anything on the other side of two. So again, I'm going to use a parenthesis with the two and it's going to go on out to infinity. Okay. Same thing on this next one. Anytime we have a fraction, our denominator cannot equal zero. So I'm going to go ahead and set two X squared minus 50 and say that can't be zero. Okay. If that can't be zero, then I'm going to go ahead and factor out my two which leaves me with x squared minus 25, excuse me, 25, okay, cannot equal zero. And then I'm gonna factor that. That's a difference of squares. So it factors into x plus five times x minus five. Okay, and I don't want any of these factors to equal zero. Now my two here, I don't actually have um, 
a variable with my greatest common factor. So I don't need to set two equal to zero because two is not going to equal zero. But I do have to set x plus five. We don't want that to be zero. And x minus five, we don't want that to be zero. So if I move each of those numbers over, that tells me x can't be negative five and x can't be positive five. So if I wanted to draw a picture on negative five and positive five, I would put an open circle because I'm not including those. But that's the only thing I can't include. It could be anything other than negative five and five. So I'm going to shade to the left of negative five. I'm going to shade in between my fives and I'm going to shade to the right of positive five, which means that my interval notation would be from negative infinity up to negative five. And I don't include it. I use a parenthesis and then from negative five to five and then from five on out to positive infinity. Okay. So anytime we have a denominator, it can't be zero. So we figure out what values would make it zero and we just take them out of our domain. Okay. Let's look at another one here. We don't have um, a denominator, but we have a square root. Remember when we do transformations of functions, our square root starts at zero, right? We can't plug in negative values into a square root. So it either needs to be zero or it needs to be positive. And the way that we say that in math is it has to be greater than or equal to zero. So whatever is underneath the square root, okay, which is called the radicand, okay, the radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. So under here, I'm just going to take what's underneath the radical, which here's my radicand, which here is X and say X has to be greater than or equal to zero because I can't take the square root of a negative number. Okay. And then I would solve, but here X is already solved for. So on um, a little graph, if I want to draw a picture, I'd put zero on it. It has to be greater than or equal to zero. I'm going to shade to the right. Okay. And because it's greater than or equal to, that means I can include my zero. So my interval notation to represent my domain here would be a bracket because I'm including zero on out to infinity. Okay. Same thing on this next one. It's a square root. So my radicand or whatever's underneath here has to be greater than or equal to zero. So that means two X minus three has to be greater than or equal to zero. And then I just solve. So I move my three over, which means two X has to be greater than or equal to positive three. And then I divide off my two which says that X has to be greater than or equal to three halves. So if I want to graph it to help me out, I would put three halves on my graph. If it's greater than or equal to it, I'm including it. So I'm going to put a solid dot there and greater than means I'm going to the right. So as long as I plug in an X value that is three halves or larger, I will not get a negative under this radical. Oops, and that does not look like a three. Let me fix that. Three halves. Okay. Let's look at this next one. Now, this next one's a little bit different because notice it's a cube root. Okay. Remember when we have cube roots, if we were to graph a cube root, it looks something like that. Okay. Notice it doesn't have a start and stop point. It keeps going in both directions. The reason that is, is because we can plug in negative numbers into odd roots. So I'm going to say, um, I'm going to go ahead and say odd roots can have negative radicands. Remember radicands is just everything under the radical. So odd roots can have negative radicands. So that means this one has no restrictions. Okay. If we have no restrictions, then that means X could be anything. If it can be any real number, then that means our domain is from negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. Let's look at our next one. Our next one's a little bit tricky. We have a denominator and we have a square root. Okay. Remember our denominator cannot equal zero. Okay. So I'm just going to go ahead and say here, our denominator can't be zero and our radicand has to be greater than or equal to zero. Now, since it can't equal zero, I'm going to get rid of this equal to bar because there's two stipulations. One, it has to be positive or zero, 
but then because it's in the denominator it can't be zero so I'm gonna just set my radicand here x plus 2 strictly greater than zero okay and then I'm gonna move my 2 over and I do that by subtracting which means for this function whoops for this function to be defined x has to be strictly greater than negative 2 okay so if I were to graph this Here's my negative 2. I want numbers larger than negative 2, and I'm not including negative 2 because negative 2, when I plug it in, would give me a 0. Since that radical is in the denominator, I can't have a 0 in the denominator. So I'm going to leave an open circle, which means that the domain of this function is negative 2 to infinity with parentheses. Okay. Let's look at a couple more. This next one, notice I don't have a denominator that has a variable, right? I just have a 3, and I don't have any kind of radical. So really, if I plug anything in here, if I plug in a negative and square it, I can multiply it by 2 and minus 2 thirds. If I put in 0, I can multiply it by 2 and minus 2 thirds. If I plug in a positive, I can square it and multiply it by 2 and minus 2 thirds. So here I have no restrictions. I don't have a variable denominator. I don't have an even root. If there's no restrictions, then my domain is negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay. And then the last one, here we go. I have both, again, um, I have both an even root and a denominator. So I have to worry about my denominator. My denominator can't be zero. And my radical, even though it's in the numerator, because it's a square root, I still have to worry about making sure whatever's underneath there stays non-negative, right? So that means uh, my radical has to stay greater than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna go ahead and work these out separately. 4x plus four has to, I'm sorry, 4x plus eight has to be greater than or equal to zero. So I'm gonna move my eight over, which says that 4x has to be greater than or equal to negative eight. And then I divide off my four. So that tells me x has to be greater than or equal to negative two. Okay. Then I work out my second stipulation, which is that x squared minus 16 can't equal 0. Okay. Again, this is a difference of squares, or you can solve it with a square root. It doesn't matter. I could do x squared equals 16, or cannot equal 16, which means that x cannot equal plus or minus 4 if I take the square root of both sides. Okay. So I have two things it cannot equal and a range of values that it has to fall within. In other words, if I were to graph this, okay, Let's say here's negative 4, here's negative 2, and here's positive 4. Okay? I know that it cannot equal negative 4 and positive 4, so I'm going to put open circles there. So I could put anything in except for negative 4 and positive 4 with my denominator restriction. But I have an added restriction that says x can only be greater than or equal to negative 2. So I can include negative 2 and anything bigger than it. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade over here. Okay, I can't include four, because remember that makes my denominator zero, but I can have things on the other side of four. So I look at what I've shaded, and that's my interval notation. So my domain here would be from negative two with a bracket, because I'm including it, up to four, which I cannot include, so I use a parenthesis. And then on the other side of four, I can go from four to infinity, okay? So you take the most restrictive combination of all your domain restrictions when you write your answer. Okay. So here's our lesson learned. Okay. We have two restrictions that we're going to worry about in this class. The first one is fraction domain restrictions, meaning um, we cannot have a zero in the denominator. Okay. This does not mean that x can't be zero. This means the entire denominator as a whole cannot equal zero. Okay. So the denominator cannot equal zero. So what we do is we set the denominator equal to zero and solve for the excluded values, okay? Which means we're gonna solve for the things that we have to take out of our domain, okay? The other restriction that we went over is even root restrictions, which means anytime we have an even root, so I'm just gonna put for even root radicals only, okay? Because remember, if it's an odd root, we can have negatives under. But for even root radicals only, the radicand 
must be greater than or equal to zero. Okay, so we just set the radicand greater than or equal to zero and solve for the domain range um, list of values that we can plug into our function. Okay, all right, so that is all of pre-E27, um, just finding the domain given a function. There is a worksheet that goes with this that you will need to complete on hand, um, on hand, on paper, by hand, and either scan and email it to me or fax it in. Okay, um, again, your worksheets are located on the left hand tab of your course homepage under Math 118 materials. Okay, let me know if you have any questions.